Hey guys, Little Finest here, and uh, yeah, after a lot of trial and error, I finally managed to upload this. But yeah, I have nothing else to say other than, you know, there's a a couple of uh, things in the description that you should probably check out. Like for example, the music I used in this video. There's going to be some uh, information uh, in there that you probably should read first. And uh, yeah, so this is a bit of a long story, I think. What's on the long-ish side? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy and. Uh, yeah, let's uh, get into it, you know the drill. Recall your earliest childhood memory. How old are you in this memory? Four? Five? Development neuroscience tells us that we do not form episodic memories before the age of three. Supposedly, memories from before this are merely phantoms. Errors in the brain's memory formation process. Ordinary daydreams mislabel this fact. This is what the current research tells us. It is important, f is important for you to know this. Bear with me, I will not waste your time with endless foreplay. Here is my story. I'm a graduate, I'm a graduate student for linguistics. My work often overlaps with that of the neuroscience department. I have made over, I've made contacts over there. One such contact is the subject of the story. We'll call him DV. DV is also a graduate student. He uses, he uses memory. Wait, he studies memory. He uses a procedure called transcranial, transcranial uh, magnetic simulation. This procedure uses magnetic radiation to activate targeted portions of the brain. Imagine a magic wand you can point at a cluster of neurons and say, dance, and they dance. Two months ago, DV asked me to, to uh, assist me in a pet project. He was developing. He... He has assigned me in the past when I was learning to use an EEG for my research. I owed him a great deal, and I had and I had no choice but to help him in his work. DV is what I have instead of friends. I arrived at his lab after hours, as requested. He was right. He was waiting by the door. He was wearing his lab coat. It was far too big for his frame and swallowed his shoulders. He looked so childlike. Are you ready? he asked. Ready for what? I asked. I asked. Uh, he had no he had he had not told me any details about this project. I just need to practice focusing the machine, he said. I'm targeting an area of the brain no one has targeted with this device before. I con I consented with the has I I cons I consented with a, I consented with hesitation with little hesitation. He had happily served as my model subject when I was learning the EEG. And can an academia is built upon exchange of favors. Besides, his machine doesn't even break the skin. I made myself comfortable in. I made myself comfortable in the examination chair. It had leather wrist restraints, but they were never used. I was facing the bay window, the lab, the lab high on the campus hill. The night loomed heavy over the orange city lights. A few cars floated along the highway. Just try to relax, DV said. In his breath was minty and undercurrents of gin. He turned on the magic wand as I felt a familiar buzz of electricity on my scalp. The vibrations con con converged on one point just behind my ears. On both sides of my head, the points began to burn. My hair stood on end. 
How do you feel? Devi asked. He was whispering, but his voice was thick with a with a anticipation. I think he already knew the answer to his question. Before I could respond, I heard a cry from I heard a, I heard a cry from down the hall. Someone was screaming in the stairwell. Someone was howling like an animal. I heard the fresh cracking of I heard the fresh cracking of tendons popping. I heard a voice ch choking on words. Someone was vomiting up my name in the in the stairwell. I think I need to take a break, I said. I tried to turn to look at DV, but felt hands holding my head in place. I tried to move my hands, but I found that the wrist straps had been fastened. How long had I been in here, I asked, and I responded. The moaning down the hall grew closer. Someone was pounding on the doors. They were locked, but... The door wasn't, but the door to the lab wasn't. Please turn it off, I said. The current was, the currents from the machine felt like lightning coursing behind my eyes. The window grew larger. The cars on the road skidded about, skidded out of control. I watched the headlights plunge into the river. I watched the headlights, I watched the head, I watched the headlights careen into each other. The city lights. Uh, blinked out. One by one, the darkness of the landscape was so thick I could wade into it. So I did. I was out there in the void. There was more distant. There was more distance before me than the Earth's horizon provides. I was alone for the precious instant. Then the darkness was broken by a man. He had... He had... He provide... Wait. He was the man from the hall. He was a man without skin, muscles and sinew all twitching. Veins, arteries and... Spl all spluttering. I could see his heart shrivel in his chest when he looked at me. He was all slaughterhouse, no humanity. He was so close I could smell the rotten meat on his silver bones. Do you remember me? he said. His teeth were gripped out like a racehorse. His frame was blurry as if dislodged in time. His mouth locked, his mouth locked looked like a slow ex exposure slow exposure photo of his burning carcasses yes i said because i did when i was young too young to form memories i had a dream in this dream a man walked behind me and told me things about the universe i didn't want to know he was a man without skin, a man stand the, and he was the man standing before me in the void. He followed me through movie theaters, cities, parks, through the howling tunnels and unkept forests and childhood homes, only to find me huddled in the corner of my bedroom closet. He spoke a few words. I didn't. I don't have the words for the things he said. I woke up soon after, drenched in freezing sweat, uh, lips burnt with vomit, eyes sore from scrolling, from rolling in their sockets. My mind tired. My, mi wait. My mind tried to reject the memory. I have searched every language for this, for the words I heard that night, but no tongue of man could ever no tongue of man's of man has ever spoken the things I heard there in the void there in the lab the man had found me again the machine fractured my defenses and 
left him in for a second time. He spoke those words, and for a second time, my mind refused to keep them. At some point, what seemed like an eternity later, Devi removed the device from my head. As suddenly as waking up from a dream, I came to my senses. How long have I been up, hooked up for? I asked. Less than a minute, Devi responded. He had lost his tone of knowing. His voice was quiet and trembled as he spoke. Untie me, I said. I then realized my wrists were not bound. DV was th frozen in the corner. I stood up and gathered my belongings. My ears were ringing in different pitch. In a different pitch. They were. They were. Dis. Dis. They were distant. Um, they were the last notes of a song I hadn't heard in over twenty years. I'm not coming back. I said, "Please don't contact me." DV nodded. His skin was as white as his lab coat. I walked five miles to my home. I didn't trust myself behind the wheel of a car. The night was silent, and I walked even. I walked. Even the crickets were quiet for me. When I got home, I vomited in the bathroom sink. I watched my breakfast, lunch, and dinner cycle circle the spluttering drain. I looked into the mirror. My shirt was drenched with blood, except for the pattern of ribs across the front. The blood was still wet to the, tu to the touch. My pockets were full of cartridge, and my socks were soaked with afterbirth. I knew the clothes in the trash... I threw the clothes in the trash compactor that night. DV and I do not speak. I do not see him on the campus. Uh, I complete my schoolwork regularly. I pay my rent on time. I fall asleep to talk shows on the weekends and to whiskey on wait to on weeknights and to whiskey on the weekends. I do not do much dreaming nowadays, especially I don't think about my childhood. Somewhere in the unfathomed recesses of incredible in the in the accessible memory, there, there are words that shouldn't be heard. A man without skin chooses to tell me those words, and I choose to remember. I choose to reject them twice now. Not to remember. At the beginning of this text, I asked you to recall your first memory. I hope it was from something when you were four or five. I hope it was simply a memory of your first injury or something similar. Uh, I hope these things because somewhere in your brain there is a memory of something your developed brain chooses not to remember. I hope these things because the infinite horror of the forgotten words is too great for the, for the human mind to comprehend. I hope, you, I hope your dreams are blissful and your nightmares leave you happy and want to be awake. Most of all, I hope this story keeps you from exploring those dream those dreams and boundaryless vaults of your mind. When we are born, we have no defenses against the world, physical or mental. Perhaps it takes a few word, a few years to build these defenses. Perhaps we see perhaps we see before wait, perhaps the things we see before then are better left forgotten.